Welcome to our weekly program, The Inside Story of Chabad in America through the Mindel Archives. This program, um, I want to share with you a interesting fabrengen that I had with other chassidim. And probably uh, we won't be able to finish this in, in one program, so we'll have to do a few programs. We'll continue. This is a continuation of a few pr- programs. <clears throat> this Fabringen took place not in uh, Crown Heights. This Fabringen was on Shabbos, before you'd base Tammuz, between Gimel Tammuz and you'd base Tammuz. And we Fabringed Friday night, we Fabringed Shabbos by Kiddush, and then also by Shalashudis. A very unique Fabringen, and I'll tell you soon what the... What, the, the, the reason for that is because before you base Tammuz, uh, my, the Rabbi Mindel's yard site is Yud based Tammuz. Uh, he was born based Nissen, he passed away Yud based Tammuz. And also, some of the, the Kloisenberger, Chsidim, their head, the yard site of the Kloisenberger Rebbe, is also, um, is also, I think, Test Tammuz, and he passed away that year of, uh, of the Rebbe Gimbal Tammuz. And also the, the Gera Rebbe's yard site. So we got together. Now, there, there was the Kloisenberg Chsidim, Belzer Chsidim, Gera Chsidim, Vishnitzer, Satmerer, Tosher, Tosher from Montreal. And uh, there were a few literature. And, and again, since uh, they also had yard site, the Gera the, the Gerer uh, uh, Rebbe Yotzeh the Kloisenberger, so they they we we, we made one one for bringing for everybody, and um, and each one shared a story of their Rebbe. They wanted to share a story, so they were all saying that this was a unique for bringing because usually this is what they were saying, and they're listening now to the program. They told me to listen. Um, um, usually, you say, say Chabad, Fabrings with Anash, with themselves, and also with Kiruv, people that need to be Mekarev. But to Fabring with Chsidim is maybe one or two times a year, but usually it doesn't happen too often, they say. Uh, so, so this was a very Achdusdike Fabringen. They also said that we should know that Chabad always says, Afal Pisha Choto. Yisroel, but we also should know that Yisroel Shaloi Choto is also a Yisroel. So it's good to fabring with other Yidin also, with other from a Yidin. It was a very good fabring. Now I will share with you two stories that they said, and then they asked me to say two stories, but not stories that I heard, because sometimes it's not accurate. That's what they tell me. Stories that happened with me or that I was involved. And now I'm going to share with you, if I have time, the, the four stories. What, first, what they said and what I told them. So one of the people, there was a Kloisenberger, he, he's an elder read, but he used to be a Heisbacher by the old Kloisenberger Rebbe. So he was, he was there and he was telling the story. He says that, that when the Kloisenberger Rebbe came to Eretz Yisrael, he, he met Ben Gurion, and Ben Gurion told him, asked him, "What can I help you?" Um, the Kloisen Rebbe did not want to take money from Aguda. Aguda used to distribute money to all institutions, but he did not want to take. And there was politics, and I don't want to go into it today. So, but he didn't want to take. So uh, Ben Gurion said. I, I can, I'll try to help you another way. Until today, no, they, uh, they don't take any money. This is number one, he said. Then he was saying, this Kloisenberger Chassid, after the Six Day War in 1967, the Rebbe made, the Rebbe made a whole tumult, a big noise about Mifzat film. It was one of the first Mifzayim with tanks. Tfilm Varo, Kalami Oritz, Kishem Hashem Nikro Lech of Yorim Mekko, and was tombing the world and befrat in Eretz Yisrael. 
So the Litvisha Rosh Hashivas came out against this Mifzat Tfilin. They boycotted Labavich. He said then. So he was telling us they made an Asifa. Why? Why did they boycott Labavich? Because they had Labavich at tanks. Bachrim went on tanks. So they went to Haifa. Haifa is a place where it's not from Yidin. Fine. Then they went with a with a tank to the to, by the beach in Tel Aviv, and because to put to put on film, and because of that they got together as a whole tumult to boycott Lubavitch. That we have nothing with Lubavitch. That uh, all the money that goes to Vada Yeshivas will take Lubavitch out because of that. <clears throat> because the Bochrim stand by the beach and put on film with Yidden. So, so the Rosh Hashivas got together. They needed a, a a person that should be like represent this all the all the yeshivas and also chesedish yeshivas. So, so ten Rosh Hashivas went to the Kleisenberger Rebbe. They went to the Kleisenberger Rebbe and they asked them, uh, we're, "We're making a campaign against Lubavitch because they go to Bachrim. They sent Bachrim to the beach." To put on film. So the Klezmer Rebbe said to them, to one Rosh Yeshiva, how many Talmidim do you have in your Yeshiva? He says, 400. Then he asks another Rosh Yeshiva, how many Talmidim do you have in the Yeshiva? So then he says, he said, 250. Another one, he asked everyone. One says uh, 100, one says, uh, um, I don't remember, 470. And they were, anyways, all 10. So he said to them, is there any sign in yeshivas by you that you're not allowed to go to the beach? They said, no, we have no, we have no signs. So the Kleisenberger Rebbe said to them, and I heard this from this person that was there, you are not against the beach. You are against the Mifsat filling. I am not going to be part of it. And he said in this Lashen in Yiddish, the Deitschen seine gegangen an kegen film. The Klesenberger Rebbe, he suffered a lot, you know, he lost, and the Holocaust, he lost 11 children, he lost a wife, and uh, he went through a lot. So he knew, he says, the Deitschen, they were against film, and he saw the way they were against film. I will not be part of it, but it, because it's, it's not against, it's against film and not against going to the beach. Otherwise, you would have a sign in your yeshiva, you're not allowed to go. That's one thing he told, he said. Then a Vishnitzer Chosid said that for bringing a story of the Vishnitzer Rebbe. Now the cousin, he was a cousin of this person. Um, this person had a very bad heart problem. Uh, they gave him a few months to live. So he went to the Vishnitzer Rebbe in Mansi. There used to be a Vishnitzer Rebbe in Mansi. And he came to the Vishnitzer Rebbe and he said, I I uh, I need a bracha lemaylo miderech hateva higher than nature. So the vision the Rebbe said to him, "So why are you coming to me? Then you should go to a person that lives lemaylo miderech hateva that lives higher than nature. I'm, you came to the wrong person. Okay. Then a few uh, a few weeks later, he decided he'll go to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Unfortunately, he couldn't get in. He called Merkus. There was a, the secretary answered. You know, it was very hard to get into Yechidus. He said, I must see the Rebbe. But they said, you can't go in because it's... So, he, unfortunately, he didn't, he didn't go to... That's what they were telling me. He couldn't go in. So, he went to the Toshe Rebbe in Montreal. He sent his son. He couldn't go. So, the Toshe Rebbe says, go to the Vishnitzer in Ertz That's what they said. The son went to the, to the Vishnu Rebbe and he told him about his father. So he said, Ich varem trugen of meine pleitzes. I will carry him on my shoulders and give a bracha. Bekitzer, the Kleisenberger lived 20 years after this. I mean, I'm sorry, not the Kleisenberger. The, 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 the Vishnu Rebbe. That day, there's the Vishnu Rebbe passed away in Israel, this person passed away in America that day. This is a story that somebody, a cousin, he was there. 
Now they asked me to say something about the Rebbe, but something personal, something that I, I would that I know. So I am going to say two stories. I don't know if you have time for the second one, but I'll tell you the first story. In the eighties, my wife and I went to a bris in Long Beach, Long Island. There was a bris by Rabbi Abitan. Abitan was the Sfardi Sharov in Long Beach. Very, very nice person. Anyways, there was a bridge there. I was sitting, across from me was sitting a Yid, not a from, not religious. And we get, got into conversation, so he asked me, are you a Lubavitcher? I said, yeah. So he says, he wants to tell me something. He says, he's, he was married 16 and a half years, and he did not have children. Some doctors said he couldn't have, some doctors said he could, but no children. His wife, he used the Washington, was going crazy. She, this was this is the whole thing. She, she didn't need, she didn't sleep, she needed children. And I didn't know uh, what to do. I met somebody who asked me, he says, there are three um, big rabbis in New York, go to them. And I said, he said, no, because he wasn't religious. I don't believe in all this. I don't believe to go to, go to the rabbis. Uh, doctors are the ones to, to, to cure. If not doctors, I don't want to. But, you know, some people, uh, you know, called and called again, called again, called again, he says. So I agreed to go. So first they went to the Satmar Rebbe. He was older. Here he went. He came to the Satmar Rebbe and he told him they need a bracha for children. So the Satmar Rebbe opened up his drawer and he took out a a uh, piece of cloth sewed thick cloth sewed around like as, as big as, as a napkin probably or maybe even a little little bigger a piece of cloth inside was hard sewed all around and he said to him I want to give this to you don't ever open it and always carry it with you wherever you go Carry that, that cloth. But remember, you have to promise that you're going to carry, except Shabbos and Yontif. So I asked him, sitting there, No, do you have it? Yes, he took it out of his pocket. A, a, a piece of cloth, sewn around, it's hard in the middle, he can't open it. And he says, wherever I travel, he was in business, he should travel. Always, he says, remembers carrying in his pocket. That's it. Then he went to the Bob of the Rebbe. He told me he's a Bob of the Rebbe. So Bob of the Rebbe told him, you know, why don't you wear a yarmulke? You wear a yarmulke, they'll be able to see the Yid. Okay, so he says to me, he does wear a yarmulke when he eats. He wears the yarmulke, but uh, that's something that he is not so careful. He didn't ask him to promise him to wear a yarmulke always, but, uh, but he does try to wear a yarmulke. Then they took him to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He went into the Rebbe. He says, the interest, that the Rebbe was interested in him, asked him all kinds of questions about the family, about his background. And you can see the Rebbe was, was with him. N nothing else counts, just the Rebbe and him. He was amazed. Then the Rebbe asked him, no, the Rebbe said, about Tarsa Mishpacha, his wife should keep Taras HaMishpacha. And um, what else did he say? Taras HaMishpacha. And learn, learn the, the halachas in, in the Kitsch Halarach of Nida. Um, and then the Rebbe said, took, took out a parrot film and gave him the parrot film. And he says, wear it, parrot film. He says, this I want to tell you. Then he says to me, come, come with me. He went, he went to the Esdras Noshim in that bris. It was, a, it was a, a room for ladies. And he went to his wife. And, and there was a little girl, six years old. He says, you see this girl? She is a miracle girl. After I, I, my wife got pregnant, to a little, she it gave birth to a little girl. She's the girl. So, I, I, so I, I said to the wife, I was by the wife. I said to the wife, your husband told me the whole story about the Satmar and the Bobov and the Babichar. So I said to I said to I said to her, who did the miracle? She was born. 
But who did it? Was it the Satmarer? Was it the Bobaver? It was, it was the Rebbe. He says, she says, I'll tell you what. The Satmarer Rebbe gave him a piece of cloth, a piece of, maybe. He says he holds it in his face. He doesn't know what it is. Uh, he's holding it. That's all. That's all it is. The Bobaver Rebbe told him to wear a yarmulke. Yes, he tries. But I'll tell you one thing. Never misses to daven with filling. Every single day, wherever he goes, he daven with filling. And also, we, we learn from time to time the code of laws about mikveh, and she goes to the mikveh. So she says what the Rebbe accomplished is, she goes to the mikveh, and, 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 and he puts that filling every day. So, but who did the miracle? I don't know. This is the one story that, um, that I told um, the people at Fabregen. Now, since we, we don't have, um, you know, we have uh, over 15 minutes. To, how, how, long, how long is it? How long are we, are we on now? We're about uh, 16 minutes. So I wanted to tell you another story, but in Mitzvah Shem, I will continue in Mitzvah Shem next week, the other story. Thank you.